Royal Dog, the Fantastic Mr. Fox. Chapter Three: The Shooting. Well, my darling, Mister said, Mister Fox, what shall we eat tonight? I think we'll have duck tonight, said Mrs. Fox. Bring us two fat duck, if you please. One for your me, one for and me, one for one, and one for the children. Duck is shabby, the said Mr. Fox. Bunch is best. Now do be careful, said Mrs. Fox. My darling, said Mr. Fox. I can smell those goons a mile away. I can even smell them from the other buggy. Give of a filthy stink of rotten chicken skin, bunch of lake of goose river, and there's a for being the fume of apple cider hang around him like poisonous gases. Yes, but just don't don't get careless. Said said Mrs. Fox, you know、uh, they will be waiting for you, all three of them. Don't you worry about me," said Mr. Fox. "I will see you later." But Mr. Fox would not have been quiet so cocky had he known Australia, where the three farmers were waiting that moment. They were just outside the entrance to the hall, each one crouching, crouching behind the tree with his gun loaded. And what, what is more, they had chosen, chosen their position, position very carefully, make. Carefully making sure that the wind was not blowing from them toward the fox's hole. In fact, it was blowing in the opposite direction. They there was no chance of them being smelled out. Mister Fox crept up. The dog turned to the mouth of his hole. He poked his long, handsome, handsome face out into the night air and sniffed on once. He moved up on each or two forward and stopped. He sniffed again. He was already exactly careful, or when coming out from his hole, he insisted for a little more. The front half of his body was now in the open. His Black nose twitched from side to side, sniffing and sniffing for the ch- scent for dagger. He found none, and he was just about to go trotting forward in the wood when he heard or t- thought he heard. A tiny noise, a soft rustling sound, as that someone had moved a foot ever so gruntled, gruntled, dot, fancy of dry leaves. Mister Fox planted his body against the ground and lay very still, his ear free. He waited long time, but he heard nothing more. It must have been a field mouse, he told himself, or some other small animal. He scraped a little further out of the hole, then further still. He was almost right out in the open now. He took less careful look around. The wood was murky, murky and very still. 
Somewhere in the sky,、uh, the moon was shining. Just then, his sharp night eye caught a glitter, glint of a small silver speck of moonlight shining of a foolish, foolish surface. Mister Fox lay still, watching. What on earth was it? No, it was moving. It coming up and up. Great heaven! It was barrel of gun. Quick with wife, Mister Fox jumped back into the ho- his hole, and at the at the same instant, the entry was seen to explode around him. Bang! 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 The smoke from the tree, three gun float of bro. Up road in the night air, buggies and buns and bean came out came out from behind their trees and worked out toward a hole. Did we get it? The said bean. One of them shone flashlights on the hole, and there on the ground, the sock. In circle of light, half in a half out of the hole lay the four tattered, blood-stained remains of a fox's tail. Then we freak it up. We got a tail, but we missed the fox. He said, tossing the red things away. Damn and blast! Said buggies, we're shut to relate. We should have let fly the moment he fought him hand out. We won't be parking out again in the hurry. Bond said, being for the sprags from his pocket and took a swing of slider. Then he said, "It will take three days at later before he get hungry enough to come out again. I'm not staying staying around his here waiting for that. Let's dig him out." Ah," said Buggy. Now you're talking sense. We get we can dig him out in Kopai Kof's hour. We know he's there. I Laku Lakun. There are all family. All them down at the hall. Bon said. Then we have a a lot. Said Bin. Get the shovel.